What's up, YouTube? We meet again. When we last left off, Brienne of Tarth had just rescued Sansa Stark and a lot of stuff was happening in Westeros. It is uh, the 2nd of May. Oh, happy Labor Day, everybody. Um, I just wanted to... Oh, it's already 12. Yeah, happy Labor, happy Labor Day, everybody. Anyway, it's time again to watch Game of Thrones. I've got my meat and mead, of which I just made like 10 minutes ago. Seriously, I, I made this. When boys know how to cook, yeah? So, blast off to Westeros time. Game of Thrones, Season 6, Episode Dose. Do -do -do -doom, do -do -do -doom, doom. <laughs> They're all high. <laughs> They're all high as shit. Oh, oh. Dude, Bran doesn't even look like Bran. Oh shit, we're in back in time. Oh shit, Sean Bean. Oh my god, Lyanna Stark. What you talking about, Willis? So like every time, so like every time Hodor Hodors, we can just say, "What you talking about, Willis?" Uh, <laughs> oh, giants! Motherfucking giants! Oh shit! <laughs> what the fuck? So I believe that's what. In the literary world, we call a wildling's ex machina. Oh shit. Zombie Gregor. <laughs> Fatality! <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> That's like Tyrion gets the best lines. Time to fight. Round one. Fight. I'm starting to think this girl and this assassin guy is the same person. Believe it, it's the same person. Trip. This is this is the book. This is the book. This is from the book. This is from the book. This is from the book. Habibi, Habibi, Habibi. This is from the book. He's going to sleep. I know it. It's from the book. He's going to die. A few moments later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Zombie John, Zombie John. I have to leave it in the oven for a few minutes, then I'll come back. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Don't. Pull some shit off like that. Oh, oh, 
Zombie John. Zombie John versus Zombie Clegane. Oh, Zombie John. Zombie John. Zombie John. That, that was like Zombie John. Zombie John. Zombie John Snow. My name is Zombie John Snow and I know nothing. But I still want to eat brains. Okay, time for post. Time for post. Time for post. Time for post. Post episode review, ladies and gentlemen. They did it after much fan speculation. Jon Snow is back. Speaking of Jon Snow, uh, I'll leave that towards the end of this discussion. But Winterfell, that bastard, that the, the, r- literally Ramsey's character right now I see is like the freaking Antichrist. Everyone is seeing Ramsey after this is just the freaking Antichrist. That guy is really heartless, but understandably in any fantasy setting, you know, it's just like the Sith. There's a master and there's an apprentice. When the apprentice is powerful enough, he'll kill the master. And that's what happened in this episode when Ramsey Bolton killed his father in order to solidify his position. I should have seen it coming when the Karstark guy, or the, the guy there, said that uh, the North needs new blood. I should have seen something like that coming, but uh, Ramsey, uh, I, I can't right now. I'm just fucking venting over this whole Jon Snow thing. Like, oh, this is, this is one take, this is one take. In Winterfell, they, apparently news of the, the commander's death in the previous season had not reached Winterfell. They thought that Jon was still Jon and he's Lord Commander and blah blah and blah blah. And then... Ramsey Bolton was like, oh, let's go kill Jon Snow. I think their paths are all coming to interlock now. I, the one week, we'll, we'll know a lot more about this, but like, like, that's sick, dude. That, that is sick. Okay, 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 my brain, my brain, my brain, my brain. Where's my brain? Here it is. Okay, this week, a lot of interesting things happen in the north. This is a northern episode, and this was a, a Tyrion episode. In the north... Ramsey Bolton has killed his father, solidifying his position, and I think his character is now going to be just the number one public enemy of the entire fandom. And like with with literally just 18 episodes in total this year and next year, things are going to start to intertwine, just like they said before the season came out. This is this starting the season, everything's going to intertwine so it can be wrapped up in a bow and a present, a present from George R. R. Martin, a sick fucking present. A lot of things happened in the Iron Islands as well. We saw one of the Greyjoys, who was the brother of Balon. Let me go fact check that a bit. I'm gonna try to deliver this five minutes without being too fanboyish. Fanboyish! Okay, so in the Iron Islands, Euron, who is this Greyjoy brother of Balon, uh, who is essentially Theon's uncle. He's a Greyjoy who's been out exploring the Seven Seas and making the Seven Seas his bitch. This Euron guy who pushed Balon Greyjoy off the bridge. Well, in the book, he actually slipped that night. But he is this badass. It's confirmed he's a badass. If you read up on his lore or if you read the books, you know that Euron is not a Greyjoy to be trifled with. And I was excited to see Euron Greyjoy because I like that type of character. To me, he seems like an Oberyn type of character, you know, someone who's been around West, not just Westeros, but also Essos, seeing all sorts of crazy mad shit. And he's now in the Game of Thrones. He's now a, a part of the game. And uh, his short scene was him just deposing his brother. And I, I think this episode, Iron Islands, was really cool if you know who Euron was and it's it's weird and it's kind of it's kind of unfortunate that he only comes in late game but I, th- I thought that was really cool that Euron's finally showing up uh, really cool shit this episode was well, other than Jon Snow of course but really cool shit this episode was you got to see Lyanna Stark and Ben Stark and all the, the the greater Starks the older Starks in their younger form in the flashback that Bran who looks Wow, these kids have grown up, man. These kids have really grown up. Bran has seen all his his father and his uncles and his auntie, his Lyanna Stark, who's allegedly very, very hot, but she's a she's a you know she's a kid, you know, just like she's still underage at that time. So it's really nice to see sort of like a Game of Thrones extended universe 
you know, and reimagining of Ice and Fire during a time before, you know, season one. That that's really cool because I always harped on, like they should make a Robert's Rebellion the movie. It would be a really awesome storyline. So this is like an example of them going back in time before season one, episode one, which is I think really cool and interesting. And like many people are saying that Robert Baratheon the movie from the time before Game of Thrones won't happen and it's a bad idea but I'm hoping against hope because I think it would make for a very good contained storyline. Theon is starting to get his balls back even though we know that will never happen completely wink wink and he's 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 starting to you know become Theon again he's no longer reek for a few seasons he's been reek and uh, of course that ties into the whole uh, Iron Islands. I don't I think Euron's gonna be such a bad guy. I think he'll have his own intentions, but they will clash with the already established characters, such as Theon and Yara, who doesn't really exist in the books, but whatever. Um, all in all, I think the beginning of this episode was really quite slow. No titties this episode either, which also reinforces the fact that it was a very tame and slow episode to begin with. I was waiting for things to pick up, and then when Ramsay stabbed Mr. Bolton, the late Mr. Bolton, then I knew things were really picking up. And of course, towards the end, like, they, they just like, okay, okay, about Jon Snow. Now, everyone from Comic-Con, I saw a lot of the cosplays, especially in the previous years. They were saying that Lord of Light's going to bring him back. And now he's Zombie John. Like, you know, like, Jesus John. I should just call him Jesus Snow because, like, brought back from the dead, you know. So like just now in that scene, like everyone had given up hope and then I was like, oh, you just gotta leave him, leave him, leave him in the oven for a bit and then he'll be ready, he'll be back. So like the moment that I knew Jon Snow was going to be back was when the wolf was like, because he sensed some sort of soul going back into the body because wolves know these things, you know, wolves, they're more acute, they're more, they can sense a lot more. But yeah, Jon Snow's back, everyone. He's the last literally he's the last traditional fantasy hero left everyone in game of thrones is right now other than Jon snow is like a, a scoundrel you know morally morally ambiguous you can't really root for them other than Tyrion, yeah Tyrion, john no daenerys this episode there was no daenerys obviously this review is like very crisscross minded i i really can't focus and think right now because like the Jon Snow thing, like, uh, Jon Snow, Jon Snow. Of course, we had panicked, like, a season before. I was in my friend's apartment, and, and, and we really kind of got really messed up when Jon Snow died. But now, he's back. I thought they were going to harp on it a few more episodes. They were just going to just drag it out a bit. But I guess Kit Harrington was tired of just lying down and shit. Now he's like, Ugh, he's back. So... Jon Snow, in a sense, is a traditional protagonist. If anyone's a protagonist at this point, it's Jon Snow and Tyrion Lannister. Those who don't really have blood in their ledger. Well, Tyrion, he's been put in a tough spot, but... Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I really can't think straight right now because Jon Snow right now. What I noticed though at the moment of Jon Snow coming back is that they chose the same camera angle as they did when Jon Snow died. How they ended the season last year was with Jon Snow on the ground and you, you have hit the camera coming up like this right and now when he's coming back to life he's like like this also you know like just in your face like that so it's the same. So why, why, why people are going cray over Jon Snow is that he's the feel good, he's the, he's the emotional cop out. You want to feel good watching Game of Thrones, just watch what the Lord Commander does and be impressed that the forces of good can win over the forces of evil. And now he's back and we're, the show's back on track. No more hysteria. Seriously, I think I just woke up my neighbors with all my shouting just now so I had to tune it down. I just had to... Just had to tune it down for a bit, tune it down, you know, kind of mellow out, mellow out, I'm, I'm gonna make it, I'm, I'm, chill, 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 I promise I won't be this sarabut, this chaotic next viewing sesh, but like right now I just gotta close it, thanks for watching everyone, tune in next time.